Today, I'm going to be talking about how to calibrate your piano disc prodigy. There's really no videos online about this, and a lot of times when our pianos get delivered, uh, we calibrate them here. Actually, I calibrate them. So they play nice and soft and nice and even and all that. But for some reason, sometimes calibration gets lost, and then people call me up and they don't know how to do it, and it's kind of confusing, and yeah, all that stuff. So we're going to try and get through that today with this piano in here. Incidentally, this is a Yamaha G5, and I'm going to make this two in one video because this. This uh, piano is going out to Deborah and Mark in Knoxville, Can uh, Tennessee. This is a Yamaha G5, and it's just beautiful. So, before we get started with the um, tour of the calibration app, I want the camera just to go around and take a look at the piano and just how beautiful it is. I'll play it a little bit. This is a wonderful piano. It's a six foot six, which is way over the size of a, of a small grand. It's actually a medium sized grand. And uh, these pianos, since they stopped making them in the, in the early 1990s, you can get them very reasonably here. Here, generally speaking, they're about $12,500. Whereas uh, C5s usually start at 15 and pretty much the same piano. So, anyway, now we're going to get to the calibration. This piano is a piano disc system on it and uh, one of the things that uh, that you you do when you get a piano from us is that you a lot of times you'll send me your iPad and it'll already have the piano disc app already in there which is the user interface app which is this one here which has all the music in it I'll show you what it looks like here back on the screen it's this app right here if you can see it and the next app is going to be the one that we use here in in house in order to calibrate the piano is going to be the piano disc calibration app and that's what the icon looks like here so when you download this from the app store I don't even think it costs anything but um, if you want to calibrate your piano and get the most out of it um, that's really the best way to do it over here at uh, in a warehouse it's kind of hard for me because we have different type of acoustics in here as you, as you can hear it's very very live and a lot of times when I calibrate the piano there'll be some noise going on in here and and if it gets noisy in here, it's hard for me to calibrate because I really can't hear the tone of the piano and, and, uh, and, and be able to calibrate it to the softest po possible volume, which is what your, what, your, what your main intent is doing. You want to let the piano know the softest volume it can play at without missing the notes, okay, missing the key. So for instance, when I strike a note, okay, I'm striking note and a hammer, I got some Oh, I got some dirt on my hands. I got it on the key. I have to get this off of the cloth. Anyway, so when you um, when you hit the note hard, obviously you get a loud sound. If you hit it very, very soft, you're going to get a soft sound. Okay, so when you strike a note on the piano, obviously the harder you strike a note, the louder it's going to be. Well, in order for the app to be able to tell the piano the softest possible volume, you don't want the solenoid to strike the note so softly that you don't hear the hammer strike. So you have to tell, uh, you, when you calibrate, you're letting the iPad know the lowest possible volume that you can get on the piano, and that's, that's, what you're, um, that's the trick to really how you get the piano to play at a soft volume. Because in your home, you're not going to be sitting there staring at the piano, watching it play like you had somebody performing on it. You're just going to have the piano playing in the background in your house, and you want it to play nice and soft, so you can pick up the phone, you can have a conversation, you're not being distracted, you know. So that's uh, that's that's your that's your whole the whole reason why you want to calibrate it to the lowest possible volume. So just to get this started, 
the main most important thing is, is that when we go into our settings over here, you want to make sure that it's on Bluetooth. Now, uh, most people send me their iPads, and I can uh, get the iPad made it up to the, to the piano. And you see right off the bat, it's already made it up. See, it says piano disc, silent drive, Bluetooth audio, okay? So how the piano plays the music is through Bluetooth audio. So you always want to have it connected to Bluetooth audio. Sometimes it won't connect, and you have to hit forget and then have it come back up again, just like all other uh, uh, Bluetooth devices. The other one is Piano Disc Silent Drive Bluetooth MIDI, and that's what's used for the calibration app, okay? So you have to have both of them connected in order to calibrate. When you're playing the piano, you want to disconnect the Bluetooth MIDI, okay? So we'll, we'll get into that uh, afterwards. So we'll go back out of here, and we're going to open up the app for the calibration, okay? Now, this actually already has uh, calibration in it, but we're just going to go over uh, how, how to calibrate. And basically, when you have this um, screen come up, the first thing that you want to do is you're going to hit test for the key hold force, okay? And what that means is, if you read this, it's when the test button is depressed, the piano will play a four note chord while the keys are held down by the key solenoids. Pull the keys up in front or push down on the back of the key. You're just gonna push down on the front. You're not gonna push down on the back. I don't know even why it says that. How can you even push in the back? Anyway, so uh, ideally the four notes will return to the fully depressed position, okay? So that means that when you hit the note, when you hit this uh, test button and it hits this, you wanna lift this up and you wanna see it go back down just like it is here. So if I go and if I, if I take it down off of 82 and we go all the way down, let's say 60 something and we press test. Well, it'll still do that. Let's go even further lower. Okay, let's try it again. See over here, now that's no good, okay? So we wanna go up to where it just starts where it just starts to do it so that it goes back down. So that's good right there. The next thing is power offset. Generally speaking, I usually put it around minus three or minus five uh, in order so that you have a lot more leeway in uh, calibrating the notes one by one. So I'm gonna leave this on minus five. That's what I usually leave them on on all Yamaha pianos. And this is also very important for other people that watch this video that have different pianos, this is really only for Yamahas. And the reason why is that all we really install these pianos on are Yamahas. And so every piano is basically the same. So that's why it's a little easier for me here because if we were doing all different pianos like Steinways, Young Changs, this piano, that piano, probably be a lot different because they have totally different actions. But all these Yamahas have the same action. Okay, so it's always going to be pretty much the same, which makes it easy for me. Okay, now the main thing here is the individual key calibration or the learn method. Okay, and that is set the minimum playback level for each key. So you're telling the computer the minimum amount of energy it needs to achieve a note strike. Okay, so we're going to do it in the manual mode. I'm not really familiar with the auto mode, that's new, but I really would think that it's better manual because you're doing each key one at a time. The auto mode seems to be something that it just does one key in each section by itself and I think that the manual mode is better. So we're going to press manual over here. Okay, and you'll see this little warning that comes up, a MIDI connection to the Prodigy, Silent Drive CPO is required. And over here, when you see the green light up here, that means that your MIDI is connected through, uh, um, MIDI is uh, connected through your Bluetooth. Okay, so, so the next thing is, we're gonna go into the manual setting. Okay, so now what's happening is that, I think the, the connection for the MIDI is gone, so we're gonna have to reconnect it, disconnect it, and then connect it again. I know, sometimes you get glitches like that. There we go, okay. 
There we go. So now you have the keyboard here. Now you see the first note here, which is A, all the way down to the bottom of the first note, that's blinking. That means right now it's, it's actually playing, okay? But two things. One thing is that we don't install any solenoids here, 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 and here. Up to here, we install our first solenoid. And the reason is, is that, um, and that would be this note right here, okay? Now the reason is, is because the leg, the piano leg, actually occupy space right underneath these notes, okay? If the camera can come down and show you where the, the leg is. See the leg is? The leg is like right under where these notes are. So you can't put solenoids here. The only way you can do it is if you cut away the leg, and we don't do that here. It's not necessary because you very rarely need to play the piano down that far, okay? So, anyway, so now, sometimes this will be the first note, but we'll see. There it is. Okay, so that note is the first note. Let's go down to D. No. Okay, so this is your first note that we're going to be using. So the whole idea is that you want to go to the lowest possible volume. So now we're 23, 22. See, if I go down below that, if I go down to 21, 19, now that strike is not real clean. It's, it's a little too weak because it's, it's coming up too fast. You want a clean note strike. So I'm going to go back up to 20. So actually 23 is good. Okay, so right now we're on this note. Now that one's good. Okay, we're at 23. Let's go to the next one. It's at 38. Let's see if we can bring it down a little bit. That's actually better right there. 29, 30, 31. Let's go to F. We can go down a little bit. And that's basically what you want to do through the whole keyboard. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to do the whole keyboard because it's actually going to take probably about 20 minutes to do that. So not necessary to do that. So at this point, we're going to close this out because that's we're going to say that that's done. Okay. Then the next thing is the pedal strike force. And what that does is it tells the pedal solenoid the amount of energy it needs in order to activate the pedal. So when you hit the test button, you want to see the dampers. And if I take it over here, you'll see what the dampers are. These are the dampers and these release the strings so they can vibrate. So I'm going to press the pedal with my foot and you'll watch them go up. Okay? See them go up? So that's basically what you want to see the pedal sol solenoid do. You want to see it raise it up. Now when I use my foot on here, they're going to go up a little bit higher than what the pedal solenoid has them go because the pedal solenoid has them go up about half as much because you don't want to have a lot of noise with the pedals going up and down with the pedal solenoid. So the, the, the pedal solenoid will usually lift it up about this much. That's what you want to see. Okay, so now I'm going to press the test button and you'll see the dampers go up. See that? I'm going to do it again. Test button. That's what you want to see. Now, if, now, right now it's at 80, so I'm going to go down, let's say to 60 and see what it does. It lifts it up. So actually, I'm at 68 right now. That's pretty good because you don't want it to have too strong because it might make a little too much noise. So we'll bring it down even more. Let's bring it down to 60. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing is that you have here on the iPad, it says the pedal hold force. That means how long it holds it before it lets it go down, okay? So we press the test button, and it's gonna do the same thing. Actually, I'm gonna raise it. And that's actually better, because when I first pressed it, it barely went up, and then it, and it went down, and I 
prefer it to be a little higher. So 48 is a good level for that. What you want to listen for really is that there's no noise. I mean, if there's noise, that means it's using too much force and you can go down less in these values here, okay? And it'll, it'll play more quiet, okay? Pedal drop time, that's uh, generally, I leave it at 120 for the Yamaha pianos and you don't really have to mess with that. Okay, so now you have the advanced section here, okay? And you just click agree here and it's gonna go into that. This is minimum note du duration, okay? Um, and what you want to do is that it says play the test and decrease the value as much as possible. Ideally, the lowest minimum note duration value with all the notes playing is best. So what that means is that you're going to press the note test button and each note is going to play by itself. But it wants it to be... Like that, okay? So let's press it. And right now the value, so it's playing all the notes and it's at zero. So you really can't go any lower than that, unless you can go to minus. No, zero is the lowest, so that's fine. Everything else here, you're always going to leave the same as when you get your piano because uh, um, you're going to leave it off because uh, after 2007 piano, disc key solenoids no longer use springs. Only disable the setting when working with older systems that utilize springs in the, sol in the solenoids, okay? So, you want to leave it on. On this it was off. I don't think it really makes that much of a difference either way because when I've been uh, uh, calibrating these, whether it's off or on really doesn't, really hasn't made any, uh, any difference. So now we're going to go home and we're going to go to the next part of the calibration, which is calibration section with the IQ. Now that is where you're going to be setting the level of the volume with the background music, okay? So we're going to press IQ here. MIDI connection to the Prodigy. Well, it may have gotten disconnected because it doesn't want to connect right now. Okay, so we're going to do what we did before, go in here. Disconnect it, connect it again. Sometimes you gotta play with this so that it behaves. I'll try it again. There we go, okay? So now, in this, in this part of the app, what you wanna do is you wanna take the iPad and go to the volume control, and it's actually up here, so it makes it a little better, easier. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna load a volume all the way, all the way down, okay? Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the minimum volume level for the piano versus the background music. So what we're going to do is we're going to press play, okay? Now, if you listen very quietly, you'll hear the speaker underneath the piano is playing a drum beat, okay, at a very low volume, okay? So what you want to do is you want to bring the piano volume up, little by little. the drum track and that's the, the lowest possible volume that you're going to get with the piano with the background music. So at that point we're going to press minimum. There we go. Press stop. Okay. The next thing we'll do is we're going to have it play the max. The other thing that I usually do is I usually lower the pianos loudest sound down and we move this over here. This is the adjust the volume range of the piano. I usually put it down to about midway because one of the things that you don't want is the piano to be loud. You know, and face it, you got a six and a half foot grand piano here. You're not using the player system in order to have the piano be loud and um, you could actually control the volume with the iPad anyway. So I usually like to back the piano down to about here in order to get a nice mix between the piano and the background music. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to adjust the loudest, the loudest. So now we're going to go up. Basically, 
you're done. Okay? There's other settings here. Um, these are the defaults. Just leave it at the defaults. They're fine the way they are. Okay? So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the MIDI from the Bluetooth. Okay? Done. Okay? Uh, what you also do, you go back home here and uh, you can actually save your calibration by going back to Silent Drive. Uh, I disconnected it from the MIDI, so now I've got to connect it back up again. Hold on a second. Let's get, get back connected up. Because we want to save the setting, okay? So you're going to go to Silent Drive. Boom. And one of the things you want to do is you want to save your setting. And you can give it a name. So we're going to go, uh, let's see, we're going to do G5. And we'll just leave it at that. I'm sure you're only going to have one piano in your house. G5 piano, how's that? There we go, okay? So I'm going to save that. So now you saved your settings, okay? So now the next thing you're going to do, you're going to come out of here. You're going to get disconnected. And after you disconnect, you also want to swipe this app out of the screen because you don't want it to even be remotely connected to the piano. You're done, okay? So now we're going to go into the IQ app that plays the music, okay? So here we go. Put this here, this way. Go into the main screen. Uh, when you get your iPad from us, this is what you're going to see. Um, so the first thing that you want to listen to is you want to listen to maybe just piano only. Okay, so I'm going to listen to piano. When you, how you know it's piano only is any of this uh, artwork here, if it's a generic artwork, like you see this, 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 it's uh, basically just piano. When you see famous artists like Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, it's their album with them singing. And then when you see videos, it's a video. Okay, so this one here. We're going to play uh, a little Clare de Lune. Now, to set the volume here, what you want to do is two things. One thing that's important, if it doesn't play, you want to hit your speaker over here, and you want to hit this little window, this little box here, okay? And then you're going to see iPad and your piano disc silent drive Bluetooth, okay? Sometimes you won't see this pop up, okay? Or this will be clicked on, okay? If that, if it says iPad on here, and you go and play something, you're going to hear that sound. I'll make it loud so you hear it. If you hear that sound, that sound is what's supposed to be going into the piano to tell the piano what to play. But right now, it's coming out of the iPad. So you want to hit your button here, and you want to make that sound go to the piano. There you go. Piano starts playing right off, okay? Okay, other buttons here. This is important. This is the balance between background music and piano, okay? Generally speaking, you want it in the middle if you're listening to the piano only, okay? And then when you go to accompaniment, you're gonna, you might make a change and I'll explain why, okay? So we're gonna listen to a little bit of this, uh, this Debussy. Press play. low volume. Let's see if we want to get it lower. You want to move the, the knob here. I don't know, not the knob, the, I don't know what it, the slider. How's that, the slider? And then listen. You want to move it a little bit, stop and listen, because you have to give it, you have to give it time to react. It's not like the volume control on your car radio where you turn it and, you know, you can turn it whatever way and it, and it does exactly what you do, what, what you tell it to do when you tell it to do it. Uh, with this, it's a little different. You just have to move the slider and then a little bit and then wait to hear the reaction that you get. So we'll go back. Let's put this down a little lower. Okay, so right here is the break point where the solenoids are not getting enough energy for the, for the hams to strike the string. So we're going to go back up a little bit. Okay, so that would be piano only. Now the next type of software that we're going to talk about is the, the type of software that you have with your background music along with the piano. So let's say if we go into uh, some Frank Sinatra here, okay? So uh, let's pick one here. 
Uh, how about my way? All right, I'm gonna press play. Now, right off the bat, I hear that there is a drum beat coming out of the speaker underneath the piano, but it's a very, very low volume, okay? And the piano is dominant, okay? Well, one thing about any of these recordings, the piano is not always going to be dominant because you have a vocalist, okay? So you're going to have to adjust the balance. So let's play this again. See, you can actually hear Frank Sinatra singing, but he's singing really low at a low volume, and the piano is like burying the, the background track. So I'm going to hit this again. Now let's go into the balance section. We're going to move it more over to accompaniment. Now you hear Frankie. Then I'm going to bring this up. I know Deborah's loving this. She can't wait to get this piano in her house. This is a second piano from us. She actually bought a G3 first and then she upgraded to the G5. Anyway, so that's that. And then the other type of software that you have is videos. So let's play one of these videos that are here. Okay. Now the one thing about the videos is that um, uh, the videos you really don't have any way to control the balance, but they're actually actually mixed very well. You don't really need to. So uh, let's hit this one here. Just press play. Turn the volume down a little bit. I love the piano. I love the piano. This fella play the final piano, the grand piano, which simply carries me away. So I'm going to do it off. I love the final. He plays a style. Well, I would play it more, but actually, what happens is that when YouTube senses that there's copyrighted material, they don't uh, let you watch the video. So I think I can only get like maybe 15, 20 seconds of copyrighted material. That's what I can get away with playing on here. But I hope that that helps you guys if you want to try to uh, calibrate your own piano when it comes in. Because like I said, sometimes if you can't get the piano to play soft enough, you really should because this system does play a very, very soft volume. There's a very good chance that the calibration somehow got lost because, and I don't know the right terminology for it, but when we calibrate it, it's, it's supposed to stay in the memory of the CPU, and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. Rare occasions. But it's always also very good if you can calibrate the piano in your home according to your tastes, because as I said, I'm calibrating in here with all this extraneous noise going on, and sometimes maybe I could do a better job if I was actually in your house calibrating. But uh, if that uh, uh, gets you to download the app and work on it yourself, you probably get you know, need some practice on it and, and play with it a little bit, but you'll get the most out of your piano if you have some patience and work with the calibration app and, uh, and, and get it the way that it really should be so that you enjoy it the most. So I thank you for watching and uh, hit the like button and subscribe. See you later.